under this scenario, I have survey a survey drawing that we have gotten through the use of point clouds. We've gone out, we've gotten that survey, so I'm going to go to another drawing. And the first thing that I want to do is get that survey information into my file. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to my Insert tab, and I want to insert a point cloud. I want to attach a point cloud. This is going to behave similarly. I'm just going to change the type of point cloud file that I have. I'm going to make it an RCS file. And this is going to attach itself to my drawing, and you'll see within the dialog box, quite similarly to the XREF command that you've probably gained some familiarity with. I choose what path type I'm going to have here, how am I going to insert this, and again, just for our sake, the sake of our demonstration, I'm just going to insert it at 0, 0, um, and then I'm going to attach that point cloud. That's my point cloud drawing. I'm going to use my view cube here to get a look at my, my point cloud drawing. I can navigate around to see what I'm looking at. Now, I can take this information, and if I'm just viewing this through the point cloud, but I also want to be able to take a look at it in sections, I'm going to go back to my top view. select my point cloud and use my point cloud tools where I want to show a bounding, whether or not I want to show the bounding box for it, I can turn that bounding box off and I can create a clip box, a rectangular clip box and I just create that clip box and I've actually clipped my point cloud and give myself another view of looking inside that point cloud drawing so you can get a better look at it what objects were, were found or seen within that survey drawn. So do I want to show the clip frame or not? I'm going to unhide it and I'm going to go back to my top view because I can take, now that I have my point cloud drawing, I can take this and again, the accuracy of the point cloud is, it depends on the tool used for the point cloud. Uh, so to create the point cloud so now I can go back and I can start creating my objects. Maybe I want to go in and I want to start creating polylines that I'm going to use to trace around the extents of this drawing. And I'm just going to go around and give myself you know, a rudimentary start to this. See how quickly I can go around my, my polyline tool. Use my fillet tool. Just kind of extend that. I use my offset tool for the for the thickness of the wall. <clears throat> Give myself four inches for the thickness of this wall and again this is information that you're going to end up having let me make sure I'm not I'm getting the actual AutoCAD line and not the point cloud and now there is my walls for my objects. Again, so here maybe this needed to extend down a little bit more, so I'll just kind of quickly grab that. And now when I go to my 3D view, go using my view cube, if I wanted to, I can then take this, go to my 3D tools, and extrude it and extrude so I get the 3D wall. And this is actually what we'd get with that extrusion where I can, I can extrude and get my 3D walls for whatever height those walls are, create my openings inside of my voided openings for any of the doors and windows that are part of my file. So this is how easily I can convert, go from a point cloud survey drawing 
to real AutoCAD 3D objects that again, I can go through and apply materials to. Um, so that's how we can leverage what we get from the point cloud and, and, and turn that into real AutoCAD objects that are gonna allow us to then document this to the level of specificity that we need. Now, if I wanna go back in again and select my point cloud so I can get a look at both what's going on We go back to a plan view here. Sorry, we go back to my top view. Use my view cube to swing this around because I know the perspective that I want. Use my rectangular box. And again, that's going to allow me to then take a look at my objects. If I want to then go in and change, because I want to see what those objects are in relation ship to the walls that I drew, I can go in and change my visual style to wireframe. Or I can go in and hide the actual AutoCAD objects that I have. So I'm going to switch this back to hidden. So you can see how easy that is to use that information 